Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Taylor. I'm the District Director at the Washington District of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and it's my honor to be with you here today to celebrate your citizenship. It's my pleasure to welcome you, your friends, your families, and your guests to this very special naturalization ceremony here at the Eisenhower Executive Office Building South Court Auditorium. I would like to especially thank the Vice President for hosting us here in this special place. Today we celebrate you as America's newest citizens, and we celebrate Constitution Day and Citizenship Day as part of Constitution Week. We mark this special celebration by connecting the Constitution and citizenship and reflecting on what it means to become a United States citizen. To officially begin our ceremony, I would like to ask everyone to rise, place your right hand over your heart for the singing of the national anthem by musician first class, U.S. Navy, Danley Cuenca. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets reclared the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Thank you, that was beautiful. Everyone, please be seated. Now I have the privilege, privilege of calling the countries of naturalization candidates. Candidates, when you hear your country of nationality called, please stand and remain standing for the administration of the oath. Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bolivia, China, Cote d'Ivoire, Croatia, Ecuador, El Salvador, Ethiopia, France, Germany, Ghana, Guatemala, India, Iraq, Israel, Kenya, Malawi, Mauritius, Pakistan, Peru, Philippines, Sierra Leone, Syria, Uzbekistan, and Vietnam. Mr. Renault, I present to you 28 candidates representing 26 countries who have applied to become citizens of the United States. Each of the candidates has been interviewed by an officer of USCIS and unless exempted by law has demonstrated the ability to read, write, and speak words in the English language. Each has demonstrated his or her knowledge and understanding of the history and the principles and form of government of the United States. Mr. Renault, I recommend that these candidates be administered the oath of allegiance, thereby admitting them to United States citizenship. Thank you, Director Taylor. It is my honor to administer the oath of allegiance today. Candidates for citizenship, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore 
been a subject or a citizen, that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, that I'll perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law, that I'll perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, so help me God. Congratulations. If everyone would remain standing, I'd like to ask you all to um, uh, join in the Pledge of Allegiance. Unlike the oath, we will recite the Pledge of Allegiance in unison. Please place your right hand over your heart, face the flag, and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you may be seated. Well, what a great day. On behalf of all the men and women of United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, I am honored to be the first person to call you my fellow Americans. Today, we have much to celebrate. We celebrate you, the newest citizens of the United States, and we celebrate Constitution Day and Citizenship Day as part of Constitution Week. During Constitution Week, we honor the anniversary of the signing of the United States Constitution on September 17th, 1787 in Philadelphia. We reflect on what it means to be a citizen of the United States of America. As part of the celebration, we welcome thousands of new US citizens just like you in special naturalization, naturalization ceremonies across the country. Uh, perhaps none as special as this one, though. In the process of becoming United States citizens, you learned our nation's history. You studied our form of government, our founding documents, and the freedoms we share because of the actions our founders took to secure the blessings of liberty for all Americans. Now, as citizens of this great country, American history is your history. Today, in taking the oath of allegiance, to support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America, you have gained important new rights and responsibilities, along with ownership of America's future. I hope this day inspires you to fully exercise those rights and meet the responsibilities that accompany your new status as United States citizens. I, 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 excuse me. <clears throat> I encourage each of you to be active and engaged citizens and members of your community cast your vote during elections, serve on a jury if called, and learn about issues affecting you and your community. You may choose to add, our nation, add, add to our nation's entrepreneurial spirit by operating a business. You can represent your community, state, or nation by running for public office. You may also choose to join our armed forces. These are just some of the ways that you can be involved. Taking the oath of allegiance and embracing U.S. citizenship is a remarkable act of patriotism, and we are a stronger nation today because of naturalized citizens like you, individuals who followed the rules, upheld our laws, and chose to make a permanent commitment to the United States of America. I'm confident that your spirit and dedication will contribute to the continued prosperity, strength, and well-being of our nation. During this Constitution Week, I congratulate each of you and welcome you as our newest citizens, and I thank you for making we the people 28 persons stronger. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the 48th Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence. Vice, I, I have more, but I will let you go. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, thank you for joining us. You're great. Great you. you. To Associate uh, Director uh, Daniel Reno, to District Director Sarah Taylor, to all of you gathered here to celebrate this very special moment. It is Constitution Day in America, but this is your day, your first day as American citizens, and you have our congratulations. And on behalf of the first family, let me say, Welcome to the White House, and welcome to the American family. I can't, I, I just don't think any, any American can fail to be moved uh, by a moment like this. And we're deeply inspired by your example. Uh, and the, uh, the warmth and enthusiasm that we see on your faces and the faces of your loved ones that are gathered here. Uh, today, uh, you've come uh, to the end of at least a chapter on your journey. Uh, you've come from 26 countries across five continents. I'm also told that you come from about every walk of life. Looking forward to shaking each one of your hands. But today, we have with us a small business owner, a human resources executive, a hairstylist, a student, a computer scientist, a bank teller, just to name a few. And you all have one thing in common. You aspired to be Americans. You stepped forward, you followed the law, you went through the process, and today you are American citizens. Well done. And now that the process is complete, you've joined the ranks of the freest and most prosperous nation in the history of the world. You have our congratulations. And also, you have the congratulations of a man who is himself as my family is, the product of immigration. A man I serve with every day and I have a lot in common. Some people think we're different, but the truth of the matter is our family stories are very similar. Our fathers both built small businesses as first-generation American families, but our grandfathers both immigrated to this country just like you did. And so, uh, on my behalf, on my family's behalf, and on behalf of the 45th President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump, I offer you our congratulations. Well done. Now, as Americans, uh, you'll have all the rights and privileges of citizenship. You'll participate in many debates in American life, including debates over immigration in this country. But as you experience today, Make no mistake about it, the United States of America is the most generous and welcoming system of immigration in the history of the world, and you prove that again today. I'm proud to report that last year alone, more than three quarters of a million people raised their right hand just like you and joined the American family. But today is a special day not only for you, but as has been mentioned several times, it's also a special day because it was on this day, September 17th, 232 years ago, that the Constitution of the United States of America was signed. It was an extraordinary moment, not just in American history, it was an extraordinary moment in human history. And today, it's your Constitution. And so, I, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage each and every one of you to study it, to understand it. I was a teenager when I first began to study and understand the Constitution of the United States. And it has, it has been a, a decades-long love affair with this document. I, I would encourage you to understand it better, the Constitution that you just swore an oath to support and defend. Uh, study the genius of the American founding. Study the rights and liberties that are now yours. And. Uh, Live out your promise today to support and defend the Constitution as Americans. 
There's a famous story at the close of the Constitutional Convention, perhaps happened on this very day, 232 years ago, that Benjamin Franklin was walking out, and a little old lady stopped him on the street and asked him what kind of government they'd formed. Benjamin Franklin, history records, replied, a republic, madam, if you can keep it. And now I say, uh, I say with great pride, 232 years on, because of the sacrifices and determination of generations of Americans that you are no now joining, we have kept it. We have kept the republic. We have kept our constitution. And that's it worth celebrating. But my other admonition to you is always remember that you're inheriting a legacy that's been bought at a price. Our founders risked their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor to found this nation. And every generation since, men and women have put on the uniform of the United States to ensure the continued success and vitality of this republic. And so as you join the American family, join with a heart filled with gratitude for those who have gone before, for the sacrifices they've made, and gratitude to every man and woman who wears the uniform of the United States today. <laughs> Freedom is not for the faint of heart. Freedom requires vigilance and sacrifice. And you're now joining, you're now joining a nation that cherishes individual liberty creates opportunities for all. Only ask that you work hard, step forward, respect our laws, and you can live your dreams. And now that, uh, that example and that story includes all of you. And it's wonderful for me to be able to welcome you personally. I, I heard of the story of a man who came uh, to the United States from Bolivia 21 years ago. Uh, I heard he met the love of his life here raised a good family, built a career in banking, he actually retired from the Inter-American Development Bank. Jorge Salazar, welcome to America. And I'm also told there's an honorary Hoosier in the room. That's what we call those of us from Indiana. Uh, she came here as an exchange student in high school from Germany where she received some more Midwestern hospitality that we're known for out my way. Lived up there near Lake Michigan. No wonder she wanted to come back. Now she's built a life and a career, and today, Monica Erkenhauser is an American. Welcome. Great job. I could go through all your stories. I know they'd all be equally inspiring but I just uh, wanted to mention the two of them. Just so that all of you know, that the President and I all know that our, our nation grows because of the hard work and sacrifice of generations of Americans, but it's individual Americans. Here in America, we believe in the individual. We believe in the ability of every individual to live out their dreams. And that's what I want to leave you with today, is just with a, a challenge not so much as your vice president, but just as a fellow American. I want to leave you with a challenge. Um, you become citizens of the freest and most prosperous nation in the history of the world. And there is an old proverb that says, to whom much is given, much will be required. So be prepared to exercise your new prerogatives as citizens of the United States of America for good, in ways that will benefit your family, your community, your state, and your nation throughout your life. It's now up to you to do your part to keep the republic. So find the role you can play and play it. Find a way also to give back. And it doesn't always have to be in large and vaunted and obvious ways. Raise a great family. Build a career, build a business, be a good neighbor, be a school teacher, volunteer your time to a local charity or a service club. Serve in the uniform of the United States or put on the uniform of law enforcement 
in this country. You might even run for elective office. <laughs> but find a way to live out the promise that you made today. The promise that you made not to uh, just to a document signed 232 years ago, but to your fellow Americans. Find it and live it out. Live out your commitment to this country by creating more opportunity for your family and your fellow citizens. Live out the oath that you took today by contributing to the life of this nation for good. Use your freedom for good. And America will be stronger for you being here. So congratulations again. You all have made a remarkable journey to arrive at this moment. And it's humbling for me to stand before you today as the grandson of an Irish immigrant. I can't help but fail to be moved by your courage, your tenacity, and your uh, determination to join the American family. It can be a long journey, but you all are willing to make that journey. And we commend you for it. And today, with the solemn and sacred oath, You've sworn to uphold the rights and responsibilities as citizenship, and we expect nothing less. You've inherited a legacy of liberty that generations of Americans have paid for, some with their very lives. That legacy is now yours. And so live out that legacy. And finally, have faith and dream big. In many ways, it's what it means to be an American. Believe in the unlimited possibilities that now lie before you as Americans. Here in the land of the free and the home of the brave, no dreams are too big. So just go live them. Live them for your families, your children and your children's children. Because here in America, anybody can be anybody. Dream big. Work hard. Sky's the limit. And congratulations on joining the American family. God bless you all. Thank you, sir, for those inspiring remarks. At this time, I have the privilege of presenting our new citizens with their naturalization certificates. Uh, new citizens, as you hear your name called, please proceed to this side. You'll have an opportunity to shake hands with the Vice President and receive your certificate from Mr. Renault. Gabriela Lucero Smith. Lynn T. Mai Ho. Monica Sophie Jürgenhauser. Hussein Hamid Dawi. Abdul Samad Bahir Stanatsai. And Asma Stanatsai. Jorge Alberto Quintero Salazar. Yili Shao. <laughs> Elmer Manfredo Barrios Perez. <laughs> Beza Maconan Temeskan. Lemlem Habatu Askadom. Well 
Ibrahim Jadoa Aldolami. Marie Danielle Ahu Ahui. Nadim Mohammed. Afsha Amin. Marie Claire Nukmin Sang Kwong Chip. Avi Amanoff. Mislav Toluchik. <laughs> Esther Tobin. <laughs> Jane Canu. Camille Weber Chand. Camille? It's next, yes. Okay, here you go. Kolida Akma Genova Mirzaveva. Parvez Hussein. Stacy Eve Ann Tim. Tabashur Rahman Malik. <laughs> Annalyn Rolo Via. <laughs> Freddy Javier Torres Egas. Let's have a round of applause for America's newest citizens. Mr. Vice President, I want to thank you again for hosting us here and allowing us to have this incredibly special and memorable day with our newest citizens. I'd, I'd like to invite Ms. Cuenca to the podium to sing God Bless America to close today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know the song, please sing along. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her. To the prairies, to the oceans, white with hope. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home.
Thank you, everyone. Congratulations.